What's up guys, my name is Matt, and today, today I want to talk about areas like this. We've all seen loot caves, or used them ourselves, but why are these so popular? Why does everyone look at these as the be-all, end-all of loot? This is the most recent loot cave, and I just did a video on it. This is the one on Venus. What makes this so special? What makes loot caves so special? And in all honesty... Nothing. Doing this is statistically no more efficient than just killing things on patrol. Sort of, if you go out and it's, it's faster, you're killing things more often, but when it comes down to the raw numbers, you have no better chance of killing this dragon in a loot cave. There's no, like, oh, I'm going to get an Ingram because it's in this loot cave. The numbers are the same. Statistically, it is no more efficient. Now, let me explain why I can make this claim. I kind of talked about it a little bit in a channel update not too long ago, but I've never really dove into what I call Project Cade. Now, Project Cade started as a joke about leveling a character on a fresh account on Twitch from 1 to 20 on the first mission. And I'm not talking about restoration. I'm talking about the mission you can't go back to after you finish, finish it, the one playing in the background right now. Initially, it was simply to see what kind of attention I could draw if people found a guy on Twitch playing this mission over and over with no mic, no face cam, and no explanation as to why. Now, this changed very quickly and became something that no one probably would have guessed it would have been if even if they watched actively the whole time I was streaming it. Now, I played this mission 348 times never killing the captain, never completing it, allowing me to repeat it over and over. Now, why would I do such a stupid thing? Well, for an in-depth look at the loot system. I collected all the data I could from this, everything that I thought was relevant. I collected XP rates, the leveling curve data, how many enemies were in the mission when repeated, the number of runs mathematically it should have taken to complete. But the most important data collected was none of that. None of it. What I was really wanting to know was drop rates. So I collected the data on every drop I got from 1 to level 20. And then I calculated the numbers, and in all honesty, I was looking for one number, one percentage. Basically the answer to one question. That question was, if I log on and kill one thing, what percentage chance do I have of getting a drop? And I'm not talking about a good drop. I'm talking about any drop. A green, a blue, a legendary Ingram, and if you're low enough level, a white. Any drop. And after 18 plus hours, after over 10,000 kills, and some loss of insanity, I had that number. 2.56%. That's two to three drops every 100 kills. Why did I want this number? Because I believe that that 2.56% applies to everything in the game. Well, probably more of that 2 to 3% range because Bungie probably programmed it for much more than 10,000 kills. My sample size is large, but 10,000 players log on Destiny Kill One Thing, they've already outshot my data, or they've at least matched it. But I believe that 2.56 applies to everything in the game. I believe it applies to chest, strikes, engrams themselves. And I'm determined to either prove my theory or disprove it with the collection of raw data. Now I have made progress on this since I last talked about it. And I will continue progress. And when I find out numbers, I'll let you guys know in update videos. I want to be the guy you can turn to when you have a question about Destiny's loot system on top of the guy that you can turn to and rely on for daily Destiny content. And maybe even be to the guy, be the guy that shapes Destiny's future expansions, Destiny 2, and so on when it comes to the loot system. Because if I understand it fully, I can give perfect feedback to Bungie. Whether or not they see it or not, I can still be that guy that can give them solid feedback on the loot system because I understand it fully and I want to be that guy. I don't know why I like the numbers. It's something that has always drawn me to games. On top of they're just fun to play, I also like to know how they work, at least on a 
kind of rough outside scraping of knowledge. Because I don't know how it's coded or anything, but if I can know that if I go and do the strike, I have a 2.56% chance of getting this, then I know. And that's what I want to know. I want to know those numbers. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I appreciate it. And I'm glad I'm not the only one interested, or at least somewhat interested, in the raw numbers of the game we all play, Destiny. But as I said, I'll keep you guys informed. I wanted to give you guys a good introduction of Project Cade as to what it was, what I did, and what I've been doing, and what I'm going to continue to do over time on top of all the regular content that I have been, and I'll continue to do. I just wanted to give you guys a good introduction because I felt it needed its own video not just kind of tucked into a channel update. So this is Project Cade. This is what I'm doing. The links to all my spreadsheets that you guys can watch change probably on a regular basis, if not day by day, at least once every couple days. You guys can see that data and see it changing and get a rough idea of how things work. I'm currently working on Phase 2, which is chess, and then I'll, I'm also slightly getting into Phase 3, which is the Cryptarch. And I also am going to get into Phase 4, which is Strikes in general. Those are all going to be tied together. But I want to give you guys at least a rough introduction as to what Project Cade was. But I'm going to get out of here. So as always, my name is Matt. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.